It's not as strong as it should be, but it definitely turns things yellow. And it does have the subglobal spores that measure like eight and a half to nine and a half by nine and a half, but it, yes. How do you take this photo using what? Using my microscope and then I have a little doodad that I got, think I got online for um, $12.99 that I stick right down the objective. I take the objective out and slide this okay. in Same and use thing. my phone. Yeah, yeah, okay, got it. I can't do it with reticle. I wish I could so that you could see the measurement as well, but I measured it and that's what it came out to be. I measured about five or six of them. I know you're supposed to do 30, but I really started to go cross-eyed. Mm -hmm. So any ideas? You are the expert here. No, I'm really not the expert. <laughs> not any of I'm us. DNA. <laughs> Igor goes, throw all your guidebooks away. You need DNA for these. Okay, I was kind of hoping Dave Wasluski would be on, but he's not tonight. So. Yeah, he said he said sent his regrets and said he had to skip tonight. Oh well, he's been really pretty good. What are some other ones that were kind of pretty? Um, I have a question. This one, Maricel. Yeah. Did help me with this, and oh, um, somebody a told couple me. of other people look at it. But the uh, Tramatopsis cervina, it okay. had. We found this in the Pine Barrens, off by that Tibbs Lake Trail. Some really cool things back in there. But um, let's see if I can blow it up so you can see. It has kind of maze-like pores on the bottom, but they were almost like teeth. They were very, very deep, mm -hmm. and um, I, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Any of you polypore people? Does it smell good? Does it have a nice smell? It did have a nice smell. Not, it wasn't terrific smell, but it wasn't disgusting. Oh, you okay. know, your idea of nice and mine might be a little bit different, but. Because the Tramete Servina that I find, now I recognize it, but this one doesn't exactly look like that. But somebody told me that it could be a very young one. So you had to keep an eye, if you didn't collect, you come back and look at it but i found something very close to yours and i'm going back to check it out because i didn't think it was tramete servina because the colors of this the pores are a little bit more like the tone that is on the cap and it's very like rubbery flexible this was very very fresh it had just really popped Okay. And um, somebody, on, of course, Facebook, great, my mushroom identification thing, but um, on the Polypore page, had posted pictures and said he felt pretty certain that that's what it was, too. And then you had suggested that as a possible ID. Yeah. So. All right. Okay. Should we, I, time for one more? I don't want to hog things. Yeah, I think we're doing fine. There's only okay. a few people so far. Some really beautiful mushrooms out there right now. These guys, the little Dacropinex, found these at the Forest Observation Center. And first they kind of look like that good old Tremella mesenterica, but they have a little stalk on them. And um, a lot of that was found. We, we were thinking we were gonna just find a gazillion things at that Forest Resource Center, but not as many as usual. I don't know why. Maybe they must have gotten bypassed with the rain every now and then, but that's kind of an interesting one. Okay, well, maybe you know, maybe I'll send Dave my pictures of those. Um, I did post them on MO, and I know that he does sometimes cruise that. Liz? Yes. I don't know if you took a look with the lens uh, on this Tacriopinax spatularia because it's so beautiful. It has ridges. Really? It's pruinos. It has like a, like a, like a blueberry, this whitish thing that you see on blueberries. Uh -huh. And they has these ridged ridges. It's really neat. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, the next time I find it, I didn't look at it. Yeah. There was so much going on at that foray. I did not do that, but... Sorry, my phone's going off, too. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. And unless there was something else anybody was dying to look at on the... I was going to mention, Liz, you were yeah. saying if you're trying to get Dave's attention for... um. The Amanitas, I think if you post them on Mushroom Observer, both he and Igor are pretty quick to 
you know, comment. Igor almost always comments on an Amanita that I put on Mushroom Observer, usually correcting me. He, same here. Um, <laughs> he felt that you really can't identify them without um, DNA. Oh, okay. And, and those microflora tubes, Luke, do I just send them dry someplace or do you, is there a reagent that I'm supposed to add to that? Nope, dry. You dry. just put a little piece in there that's dry. Where do I send it? It's kind of complicated. Oh. <laughs> uh. It's, um, yeah, it's kind of complicated. I think we need to get like a big batch together and then we'll, we need to like get it submitted. Okay, but I can just use dried and I dry it at like 90 degrees, 90 to 100 degrees. Yeah. Let me see if I can find the exact directions for you. Okay. Liz, up. may I ask a question? What Absolutely. You, when you, what you have on the screen right this minute, the far right corner lower. Is, this guy down here? Okay. Hold on, let me. The name is? Oh, these things were so oh, yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah. The Rapologas. I, I haven't seen that in a long time, so it's nice to see it. Yeah, well, good old Nina. She knows exactly what they are. We were out walking and... Um, yeah, they're really I, unusual. Yeah, they're very unusual. And I immediately thought it was the Copernopsis variegata, but then I picked it and went, no, that's not that. And um, they were we really... Found, we found that years ago in the Pine Gar Barrens, just bunches of them one year, and that was almost the only time I'd ever seen it. Yeah, you know, it's funny because it seems like there's some things that pop certain years and yeah, right. The next right. year there's yeah, nothing at all. Yeah, yeah. I I'd only seen pictures of this. I had never seen it in person either, so Please. I was pretty excited about it. Yes, this is a very special uh, mushroom, and inside has some chambers. Mm -hmm. Maybe the next time you find it, you can take a look with the lens. is is pretty cool. Let's see. Does it show up chambers? I think, yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah, you can see it. Not on the stem, the outside. Uh, along here? Yes. Where are the spores come form in here? On the chambers. You can uh -huh. see that, the, you see some kind of, the, the area that is surrounding the stem, the one in the center. You can okay. see some kind of texture there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the whole area surrounding the stem, and we'll produce the spores in those okay. chambers. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'll, I got to get that loop out there. I always yes, man, I need leave it in my pack in the car, but um, I'll have to be more careful about that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. Okay. All right. Thank you Thanks, very much. Liz. Okay, Marisol. Liz, I saw that you found the same one. I, I wanted to see what name you put on yours, and we have the same name, Maicina Galericulata. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it what a, it is. It has a weird umbo. Mm -hmm. it has, yeah, yeah, you got that one too, yeah. Mm -hmm. I found it. It's my first time yeah, finding it, and, and I found the, the, the species name. Let's make it a little bigger. I found that at Crystal Lake a lot. Oh, okay. It's one of those pretty little bonnets. Mm -hmm. All right. And then that one. I found a very strange mushroom. Ah, oh, man, David is not here. So, no clue when I saw it. I thought it was a lepiota because of the appearance. But then when I went to do the micro, it was really something. Look at that, the, the ring. The ring was kind of made like a coarse fabric thing, almost like, like a web. Let me see if I can blow it bigger. Yes. You can see through. And it's more dense on the edge. And the, the edge of the cap has this, uh, what's the name, look for this? 
when What's pieces it? are hanging from the edge? Appendiculate. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, okay. It was just one, um, not too big, as you can see in relation to my fingers, but I was so impressed with that uh, ring. And you can see a few fibers on the stipe. And hmm, when I did the micro, the spores were brown. <laughs> so it was an um, satirella. So I have found like five species of satirella. Oh man, I didn't put the micro, I'm so sorry. Is that, uh, is that an agaricus? No, it's not. It's were not agaricus and it's not lepiota. The gills, were the, were the gills fray? They look like they were fray. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's what I think, it's an agaricus, free yeah. gills. No, no, the spores look like satirella. And, and I have found few satirellas and I recognize the, the type for the spores. I'm sorry that I cannot uh, show that to you. But, but I don't know which one yet because I haven't had anybody to ask. I didn't uh, have a chance to show it in. Satirella before. should not have free gills. Oh, I don't know that. Okay, so you think that it could be um, uh, garicus? Yeah, I do, based on the fact that it has free gills and that thick cottony ring. Yeah. Plus, oh, plus no. the, the scales on the top. Yeah, and fit. what about the veil? The, that too? Yeah, they, uh, they have cottony veils. Oh, yeah? Ah, okay. Ah, okay, I'll, I'll try that. Okay. Okay, I found this little colibia. There are three tiny colibias. One has this uh, sclerotia that looks like a, an apple seed. It's kind of reddish, brown reddish. This one is, has the sclerotia, sclerotia kind of yellow. So this one is called colibia cocaine. Don't know how to say that. They're very tiny. And they also have a, the ability to, um, Oh gosh, they dry out, but if you wet them, they come back, they revive. I just forgot the, what's the term for that. And one doesn't have any sclerotia. So I was so happy to find this little Colibia. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show something later. Mm -hmm. And I think that's not actually yellow, but a pale reddish brown. No, no, this was yellow. My photo doesn't show the well, yellow. You'll, you'll see mine, and I'm calling it Calibia tuberosa. So Tuber, tuberosa no, is the red one, the red brown. That's what I have. That's see, me. this one is not that one. There are three kinds. One is yeah. yellowish, one is reddish, and one doesn't have it. That's but it's a, very, it's a very pale reddish brown. Okay, okay. On mine. Right. So, Marisol, did you feel good about that name, Cookie Eye? Yeah, I know it because I identified, I found the three of them. Okay. I have found them before. Yeah. I remember the, the one with the red, the red. Uh, to me, it looked like a, an apple seed. I was so impressed the first time that I found it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, in here, I got a mysterious uh, mushroom. I still didn't have enough time to look for any ID. So it looks like an stekerinum, but the weird thing is how it is covered at the base. It has a stipe. So that was very puzzling to me. And it also has this edge. So the pores go below that. Oh, <laughs> by accident I did that, but it's good. So you can see that it passes from the level of the cover of the stipe down to the area where the teeth are. And stekerinos look like this. There are two. One is the, the stekerino nocrasium that is so common, but it's always, it's mostly resupinate. So I did the micro and it's an stekerino, but I don't know which one, it's a mystery to me. And they were, and the funny thing too, they were growing on a line. The way you're seeing it, this is underneath, in a crack on the wood. The other stekerino is always underneath. This one was on top. 
underneath and spreading like a like a like a cross. All right. Let me see if I can show you. This is the top. The top is very hairy. Maybe not. It's got and no, it's got teeth. You got teeth. Yeah, ah, a better photo of the top. When I saw it, I thought first about tram tremela ocrase, but no surprise when I look underneath. On top of the wood, that's the weird thing. Okay, so I got one more. Oh, I found this one. Do I have time like for two more? Yeah, I think we have plenty of time. Oh, okay, good. I found this one again on, on Sunday, on Sunday when I came after the foray. So I was looking for something else when my eye caught a, like saw something brown and round in there. And it was, I was in a swampy area. So this is called Nidularia pulvinata. And there is another one that is called the formis or something like that. And this one is so fragile. They, so they call it the P, the P verse nest. Um, it's roundish, it's like the size of a pea. It's so delicate, you can touch it and immediately it falls apart and it exposes the brown um, peridioles that they, they call them eggs. So each one of these peridioles is full of the spores. Eventually the peridiol um, decomposes, nobody really knows, but eventually it seems like it decomposes and then the, the spores are, are, they go with the, in the air. That's a great find, Maricel. Oh, thanks. And how, I read... I'm how sorry, big are they? Like a pea, a green pea size. Okay. Yeah. And they, I read somewhere that they come back, they will come back in the same spot. Mm -hmm. So it's a good thing to... This is my second time finding it, but in a different place. Oh, and the younger ones. So there were, there was like 10 or, there were like 10 or 15. This one is a little lighter. But the, the wood was really rotten. I think it's, it's, it's American chess, no, what's the name? Bean, what's the name? Bean something. Oh, I forgot the name. It's related to Fagus. Hot bean. corn bean? Yes, yes, uh-huh, that one. It's, yeah, it, it is that one. There was plenty of that wood in there. I got one more that I wanted to show you. Oh yes, this is so pretty. It's called Foliota granulosa. And you can see how beautiful the cap is. It's gorgeous. It has these, these scales that give that texture. And it's not too big, maybe like, say like two inches tall. And uh, I didn't even know what was the color of the gill, so it's yellowish. And the stem is, has a different color, like some kind of, I can't even say what color is that. But you can see it's in front of you guys. Oh, and you can see at the edge of it. It's nice. You can see the color of the top here on the edge. In very rotten wood. One more and I'm done, okay? Is that okay? Look, one more. Hello? Oh gosh, what happened? Hello? Sorry, I was muted because I was eating a cookie, but yes, <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> okay, mm, one more. Let me see one more. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, one more, yeah. Okay, so I think somebody found this little guy. I think Dave found, or somebody else, I don't remember. And, and in the same area, I found everything in the, like 50 things in the same area. So the photo's pretty bad. I don't know if I couldn't get the right color on the right ones, but I got the right color on the one in the left that is on a nut shell. And one time I found it and I could not identify it because I found it on the ground. And this time I found it on the nut and it, it seems to be my Sina cro Crochea. But then I found more on the ground and they look exactly the same. So it doesn't necessarily have to be on the nut shell. It could be on the ground too, on the nut trees. I found it. 
It's really tiny. And what it's so beautiful. Is it? what, what did you say? Is it? What? What kind of knot is it? Uh, I don't he's, know. He's asking what kind of knot. It looks like a walnut. Yes, yes. I can never remember the old names. Black yes. Walnut. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I wonder if the ones that were growing on the ground were growing on, on like decayed pieces of oh, the maybe the husk and stuff. Oh, it could be. Because yeah, old ones and a stuff falls on and creates a new layer of soil. Ah, oh, yeah, it could be. Yeah, I never thought about that. All right. Thank you. Mm, cool. All right. Thanks, Maricel. Okay. Um, Dorothy, did you want to do yours? Luke has to put them up because I send them to Luke. <laughs> well, sometimes I take a walk around the block and the first thing that I photographed is, is this and uh, was growing under a spruce tree and you know, I thought it was something different, but it's probably just old Muscaria variety Gesaui, but it's the most yellow one I've ever seen. So I don't know what you think about that, but it certainly has the concentric rings and, and the yellow has kind of faded. But uh, in the next picture. Yeah, I'm trying something else, Dorothy. How big was it, Dorothy? Yeah. You'll see the scale is right next to it. That's okay. millimeters. But and and the veil is is not very thick at all, and most of it was actually appendiculate to the margin. But but some you know had um, fallen away from the stipe. <laughs> next picture. That now this is the spore print and I it, it's on blue paper, but you know Dave mentioned to someone um, that when you're doing a spore print you put a glass underneath. So this square rectangle right here is actually a cover slip, mm. and you can see how I've moved it away. Um, and this bit of spore print was just a few hours with that cap. And then this one, I, I moved it. And this one is actually overnight. With the next picture, I added a drop of Melzer's to uh, the edge of the spore print. Mm. And right. this is a piece of tissue. And you'll see how dark brown, black, blackish it is in the center. That's because the tissue has iodine, has starch, and the iodine is going to stain it. But I, I showed that to, to prove that my Meltzer's was okay. So this is in um, section Amanita, uh, and you'll see that the, the spores uh, just give a dextrinoid in Meltzer's, which means that they're not the amyloid group, and so it's definitely section Amanita. You'll notice, um, I think the next picture. Lee, uh, Dorothy Amanita is a section or are you trying to say something else? It, it, section Amanita? It's a section? Yes. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, mm -hmm. thanks. So it would be Amanita section Amanita. That's what she's saying. Right. And, um, oh, I can, can you go back to that one? I guess I didn't, this one, this one yeah. Um, I have a close-up of the, the spore print, and it's, if you can zoom in right here. Thank you, Luke. You're welcome. Zoom in. Is that where you want me to zoom in, that area? No, uh, toward the bottom.
can you see in this spore print, this is where the gill edge was and the spore deposit on either side. That's kind of neat, mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought, if you're looking at that closely. Right, right there. Yeah. All right, then next picture. So that was um, around the block under someone's spruce tree. But then Bill and I were blowing leaves on our lawn and he kind of stepped on this. <laughs> so there's a big, thick piece of the veil. Sorry. Whoops. <laughs> Uh, right here, and this whole cap is very um, slimy, uh, and so you can see that it's a bowly. So this is a Swillus luteus, or the slippery jack, and it was also growing under a, a Norway spruce on my property. But since it kind of broke apart, got probably stepped on. <laughs> Dorothy. Yes. Does it have that deep color on the cap? Dark brown, yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know it. Thanks. Cool. That's been all over by me too. It's been coming up like crazy. And, and also the top of the stipe here has little glandular dots. If we can zoom in on that, but that's okay. Sorry. I have this up where I am kind of a lot, but not now. Hmm. I don't know why I'm having a hard time getting that to zoom in. All right, that's okay. Um, next picture. So right next to this was this also under the spruce tree in the grass um, or not far away from the spruce tree. And um, in this second one here, that underneath veil is, is all uh, mucilaginous, just solid slime. Um, but here you can see gills. This is uh, gomphidius glutinosus, glutinosus meaning that slimy veil. And it's actually, although those look like gills, uh, if we could get it larger, um, it's actually related to boletes. It's in the boletales. What's the name? Gomphidius what? Gomphidius glutinosus. Okay, glutinosus. And um, so that's uh, also described in Michael Quo quite well. It has this chrome yellow base to it. Now, we found it at uh, Stokes this year. Oh, good. Yeah, I didn't get there. Is that working? Did that blow that up? Um, it's just a white screen now, Luke. Uh, yeah, it's not working for me to do it that way. Sorry, this is the biggest I can do it. Okay, that's okay. Um, but the next picture shows um, the uh, this glutinous area on the stipe. Those are spores because this has a black spore print. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's very, very dark. So now you can see that these things are called gills, but it's this thing is actually in the bolete group. But when I put it down to photograph this one, wow, what do I see? But little tiny uh, white calibias and this mucky stuff, which was almost like soil, but that's actually a decaying fungus. And, and they're described and uh, photographed too uh, pretty well in, in mushroomexpert.com. So in the next picture, you can see a close-up. So this is actually Calibia tuberosa. And, and that color matches the, the picture in uh, mushroomexpert.com. So these are little tiny, I, I had to dig this thing out, and those are little tiny sclerotia in the rotting um, fungus, whatever it is. Uh, and so that's that's a reddish brown, not yellow. Hmm. So according to Mushroom Expert, this is this is tuberosa, Calibia tuberosa. 
That's a and cool it was song. growing on a decaying, probably that Glomphidius, do you think? Um, could, could have been. You know, I never noticed it over there. <laughs> cool. Very neat. Yeah, that is cool. So this is, a, these are millimeters um, here. So this is one centimeter. Very tiny guys. Oh, that's a cool find, Dorothy. That's really cool. Well, it's the same as what Maricel found, but I, I think it's the same thing. Because the color on hers was this reddish brown. I see the reddish brown in the sclerotia. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And does anyone, that anyone else find that that very yellow Amanita muscaria, variety Gesawii? I find it all the time. And you know what? I don't think that's it. Um, I think that might be a crinulata, to tell you the truth. Yeah, see, that's what I thought. But when I was looking in um, Rick and Jay Justice's book, it really doesn't fit crinulata. <laughs> Yeah. Did you get um, a micro on it? It, it I, I, maybe I have a feeling that Gasalia is also a complex. That could be, but I'll tell you, the ones that I get are massive and um, much. The basal bulb has all these concentric rings. It's just a much more massive. Right. I mean, I, I, I thought it was something different when I was walking by. Then I drove back with my knife to to dig it up, but. The base just looks typically concentric rings of, of um, um, Amanita muscaria gasawii. So I, I don't know what. <laughs> How, they're tough, those Amanitas. How tall was it, Dorothy? Was it? Um... Um, uh, it's on my dryer right now. Um, so probably five inches. Oh, man, the things I'm getting are like 10 inches tall and probably nine inches across. But this was not, this was under, really coming out of the grass, but on, on the roots of spruce tree and not much mulch. So if you're, you're getting stuff with thick mulch, I've, I've seen big muscaria too, so. Yeah. These are usually under white pine, the ones that I find, almost always under white pine. Yeah, so this is under spruce, but mm. I don't know what else it could have been. I, I checked every single page in the Amanita section of Jay's book. <laughs> I hate to say it, go on Rod's website and in that Amanita section, it'll give you a headache, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jay Justice, that's a great book, but there's only how many species in there, not yeah. nearly as many as Rod's website. I Maybe it's a variation in Muscaria, right. I don't know. Right, you know, is, is habitat a, a difference? Um, are yeah. the species totally undescribed? Who, who knows? Do you have those microflora tubes? Can you dry some? Because I think we need a microflora New Jersey project. Okay. Um, well, actually, there's another one growing. Okay. So I, like, I like to do the tubes with uh, a fresh section. Can you do them or do you have to dry them before you put them in the tubes? Oh, I, I think it's better to do it fresh with a sterile razor, getting a piece of the tissue totally uncontaminated. Okay, and it won't rot or anything? It won't in the tube? What do you think, Lou? So I think, well, for the mycoflora project, or the, you know, they changed the name to Fundus, that project, um, they're requesting, or not requesting, they're requiring the specimens to be dried right now because of the lab that they're using. But we used to dry them, yes, but we did the tubes with the fresh specimen. So like the lab that they were using before, they were using the um, a tube that has buffer solution in it. And when you do that, you put the fresh piece of material in the buffer solution, but they're no longer doing it that way. The lab that they're using now is sequencing from dried material. So, we, so. We, we just dry it and then send the whole thing? No, we dry it and send a tiny piece in the, um, in the tubes, in the new tubes. We have new tubes. Oh, oh have no I, I have all the old tubes. 
Yeah, those things are irrelevant now. Oh, all right. So I have to see you to get new tubes. Yeah, or I can mail them to you. I just mailed some to Liz, so ah, I can always, okay. I can always send them to you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Sir, can I ask um, for people who have um, dry specimens that they're saving to look at later or whatever? What do you what do you keep them in when you're when you after you finish drying them? How do you store them? I usually put them in a baggie and then I usually make a little tag to go with them. I try to link it to an observation either on Mushroom Observer or iNaturalist and that way there's a picture and any observations I've got. I could probably do better than I do, but that seems to be pretty good. What do you think, Luke and Dorothy? Yeah, Penny, if, if you look here, like I, you see here, I have a shoebox. <laughs> I've got, unfortunately, I've got like 10 shoeboxes sitting here, much to my wife's chagrin but in each one there is a baggie that has dried specimens you see that there's also foil that's got a spore print on it for me and then i have a little note card that has some basic information about it um likely this has got like a mushroom observer number on it so that i have a connection back to my fresh or my original photographs and then in theory i'll come back to it this winter when i have time you know in theory and look at them and then when you get back to it, you what you look at the spore. You'll look at the spores Penny, when you get back to it. Penny, your volume is too loud. Oh, sorry. Okay. Well, yeah. Yes, Penny. I, oh, go ahead, Dorothy. You want to chime in? If I tell you about the history of our club's herbarium, uh, originally, once the dried specimen was put in the wax paper bag and folded. The, all the mycological specimens from, from Rutgers plant pathology were actually packaged in folded paper envelopes. Um, and, and that's fine. Uh, but uh, what we're doing now in the herbarium is replacing uh, the wax paper folded bags uh, with plastic. But you really, really, really have to be sure <clears throat> That, that fungus is totally dried before you put it in, in a, a sealed plastic. <coughs> Excuse me. But yes, it, it, it can be stored there for any future examination of uh, tissue um, under the microscope, uh, spores, and so on. And what temperature do you dry it at, Dorothy? I have a food dehydrator, and I don't think it goes above a hundred. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm usually told the lower the better. You know, I think Igor told me like 105, 110, so as to not to degrade the DNA. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I put mine in. Um, I dry mine, and then. Um, because my house is very, very damp. I put, I got, got those uh, stuff from Michael's that dries flowers and, and I put the bags all in a box with that dried, uh, that dried sil silica or something that keeps it dry because my house is very damp. One more detail. Uh, you need to put them in the freezer for a week. Does anybody do that? Because yes. there are yes. bugs and then you will find powder. I do that too, but does that destroy the DNA if you put it in the freezer? No. Somebody said that? No. No, it, it doesn't. doesn't. I, never, I never heard about that. No. You're supposed to do that to kill the, the, the bugs. They are deep in the, in the flesh. Mm -hmm. I do that with all my edibles. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that going back to the temperature thing, um, Years ago, when I used to dry morels higher than about 100, you cook out, you dry out the flavor. They don't taste as good if you get too hot on the dryer. Mm. And, um, most of the mushrooms that I dry now are for mush dyeing wool. And um, yeah, they all get into plastic bags and they all go into the freezer for about a week. And I've had no bugs since 2005, hopefully. And uh, I've had some mushrooms for 20 years back. Thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. 
Mintari, did you want to, uh, you said you were ready to go now? Did, you emailed me. Do you want me to show them or are you gonna show them from your iNaturalist? Um, well, I have, um, I have uh, access to uh, iNaturalist and I was able to um, upload them so I can share uh, myself now. Hold on, share screen. So are you able to see it now? No, nope, not yet. Nope. Okay. I hit share screen. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. Yep. So here is actually the top is this one here. Um, and the bottom is this thing it looks like it has some teeth um maybe it's similar to what liz has shown before is it in the um, what kind of family is this it's definitely okay. tremetis i mean this is suta suta here suta i wrote the name on the chat okay thank you harry harry here suta with an h okay Oh, okay. Um, so um, that's that. Um, let's see if I can grab another picture. Um, I I disagree with that. Oh. I disagree too. Can we see the pores again? Yeah, yeah. That's the, that's the problem. Is uh, you you need to take the thing off and photograph the underside very carefully so that we can see the pores. That might be gabosa. a gabosa. Yeah, the top looks yeah. more like gabosa. Yeah, it's gabosa. I think so, so. Because look, you know, I think part of the problem is um, Mintari's connection yeah. might be a little bad because it keeps going in and out of focus. Oh. And when it goes into focus, it looks like the pores are elongated. Uh, but I have yeah. one thing to say. I never saw one Trametes gibosa with the brownish edge. What brownish, what brownish edge? Really? What brown edge? The cap. Show yeah. the cap. So hold on. I, how can I go back? The new growth is brown. It's at the edge of the cap. But I could be wrong. Sometimes they're covered with algae and all kinds of no, no, no. The, let's see the cap photo and you'll see what i mean Mintari, the, the first the, yeah the, the the new growth is brown but it could yeah i could be wrong it's not hair yeah i think no it's there's no hair no yeah. oh okay then it could be trametes gibosa i think so okay um, so gibosa, gibosa, gibosa like the moon, the gibos moon, gibosa. I'll write it in the chat. Okay. The, the lumpy bracket is a nickname, but it is lumpy, and a lot of times it is, does have a layer of algae. Uh huh. One of the things that would differentiate the two is when you look at the pores, the underside. Hirsuta, the pores would be pretty round where gibosa, they're usually long and kind of like, sometimes like a maze. Yes. Right. I think these are long when I, I thought, that's why I thought they were teeth. Yes. Um, so I thought they're pores, right? They are pores, yes. Okay. So they, they definitely would have pores. Okay. All right, so um, I want to show this one here. So this one, um you know very rotten wood other question about the previous one you have a, you have a question about the previous one yeah sorry about it if it's called here suta where do you expect to see hair on the cap yes on the upper surface of the cap okay. the top well, side you want to go back to the previous picture because we didn't see any hairs, right? No, no hair. Yes. 
Do you want me to go back to the previous picture? No, no, it's okay. No, okay. Does that answer your question? Yes. It, okay. Is this thing all chewed up or something? This? This picture now? Yes. Yeah. No, these are not chewed up at all. They are in good shape. So, so, um, look at that. That's the other side of that, those mushrooms. They're still intact. Um, you know, this also look like, um, you see, are they pores or are they teeth? They would still be pores, but I think you're just seeing because of the way the angle that it's growing on and maybe it's degrading a little bit. You're seeing oh. like the insides of it. Sometimes pores start to look a little tooth-like as they age. Oh, or, be okay. or because of the angle that it's growing on. Well said. I see. You see, they're still intact. They're beautiful. They, they you know, uh, they're very pleasant to look at. Um, Make it bigger, please. Make it bigger. There. Hmm. Is that the Servina again? Hmm. It may. <laughs> it does have that maze like pore surface. So what, what, I cannot see the chat. Did anybody identify it? Yeah, I'm typing something in there that could be. Hermitopsis cervina. Look, how can I see the chat from here? Hold on. I, you know, it's hard to see when you're sharing the screen. Yes. That's okay, probably that's best. Similar. Yeah, when you're done sharing a screen, you'll be able to see it easier. Okay, very good, very good. Okay, good. So, let me move on to the next one. So this is interesting. This one, uh, mushroom of, uh, oh, it was really beautiful. It's like a perfect, um, like milky looking, dot 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 and i was very curious and so i touch it make it bigger and, please and it melted it melted and um um so i said well maybe this was a baby or something so i came back two days later and um they all disappeared they all kind of disintegrate so but you know when i um posted in observ uh, Mushroom Observer, somebody identified as Brefeldia Maxima. It's, it's, it a, looks a, like a slime mold, if, but it's hard to say at that stage what it's going to develop into. Ah, uh, well, you know, to me, mold is more like it because it's <laughs> gooey and and, and, and milky, and then two days later, they, they're gone. Well, it just, it just decided to disappear. <laughs> they oh. do that sometimes, if you, if, you, uh, if you disturb it, especially. Right. Um, then they, do, or else it, it matured and dried and got washed away or something ate it or something, but it's hard to say. <laughs> I see, I see. But it's a, it looks like a, a developing slime mold, but you can't tell what it is until it actually forms its final form, you know, dry with the spores inside of it. Right. Okay. Huh? So that Brefeldia maxima is wrong? Uh, you can't say whether it's that or not. Okay. I mean, it could be, but if it turned dark and grayish and ugly, it, uh, then it might be, but somehow it doesn't look like it. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, I, I, I don't dispute, you know, whoever said because I don't know. Um, so, all right, so I want to share something else. Um, oh, this is... 
Mitari. Yes. I wanted to ask you something, if possible. The next time that you uh, take photos of the pores, show us, take a photo perpendicular to the pore surface, not from the side, because it's hard to judge. Oh, you know what I'm okay. trying to say? Yes, yes. Yeah, so, you need to bend down a little bit more. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. You mean from, from the top? I should take a picture from the top, not from the angle. Right. So we, you see the pores in front of you, not from an angle, because you okay. can really appreciate what's the, the shape. As Luke, as Luke was saying about Trametes, um, what's the one, Irsuta or, or, or Trametes Gibosa, because the difference in the pore surface is something. I yeah. see. Okay. I see. Got it. Next time I'll okay. do that. Okay. Okay. Myself. Next time I'll do that. Mm -hmm. So okay. this is a beautiful pile of these brown mushrooms. Again, they were growing on um, dead wood. Um, and the, I think when I picked this one, it was some of it was eaten by some bugs or whatever. You see? Um, so, you know, last time, um, Dave, was, Dave is not here in this meeting, right? Last time he was talking about the gills were attached, the gills were not attached. It looks like this, the gills were, the gills were not attached. Am I correct? They're notched, but they are attached. Oh. They made yeah. like a curve and then finally that little space left is attached. You can see it right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. <laughs> so hold on one second. You, you, yeah, you can see it on the photo. We, I just saw it. So I just sliced them. See? Mm -hmm. I sliced them. So you don't you don't say this detach here? Did, no, you, you, can, you can look more carefully and there is a little tooth like no, no. extension that is attached. You gotta look closer. You can make it bigger. Yeah. See it? Mm -hmm. you, yeah. You're talking about this. This is attached here? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so part of the gill is attached and part of it is not. But therefore, it's still attached. But as I think Dorothy said, the word was notched. Okay, nuts. Okay, right. So what do you call this guy? So Maricel and Dorothy have both um, pointed out it's a hypholoma, a brick cap. Hypholoma. Hypholoma. I think there's an H in there. Okay. So... Um, Is that the current genus on this now? Hypholoma, sub sublateration, sub yeah, okay. There you go. Marisol, I wrote it on the chat, Miss. Yeah, yeah. Internet is very slow. Um, I think. Um, let me see. I want to give other people a chance to to chat. Um. To, sh to share my, see my, my, my internet is very slow. Um, Did sublateritious take over for um, laterishum or are they two different species? No, they're the same. They're the same, okay. They're the same. Uh, Mentari, if you want to keep going with another one or two, go ahead. There's not really anybody, there's only like one or two more people queued up. If, oh, I'll take a minute to say this. If anybody else has anything they want to share, you know. Yeah. See, my computer is not. Let's see, it's, it keeps turning. It doesn't want to go anywhere. Look, please go to somebody else. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, guys. My daughter's asking me if she can have popcorn. <laughs> I was trying to answer her. Um, Stephanie and Paul have a, said they have something they want to share. You guys there? Yeah, yeah, let me, uh, let me get it set up. So while they're setting that up, I wanted to um, tell you guys, um, the other day, a couple of weeks ago, Bob Hosh stopped by my work. He was with his friend, Steve and um, had lunch. 
So he said he was thinking of everyone. A lot of you guys know Bob Hosh. So. Oh, that's good to know. I kind of worry about him because he kind of just vanished, but I'm glad Steve got him out. Yeah, I think his mobility is not good. He was, you know, I think he was using a walker, but they were out, they had lunch, we were chatting and he was having right. a good time. And I know they went over to Bowman's Hill and did something, so. Very nice. Come on, where's the, ay, ay, ay. Oh, this one? Nope, oh, okay. Sorry, I lost my thing for a second. Um, oh, what is going on? You found a little salamander in your Garfola though, huh? I did, and I'm trying to get the picture up. <laughs> Nina always warned you to be careful for those salamanders. Oh. Yeah, I was about to put them in my dehydrator, and I found this guy, um, like, in the middle of it. Oh. And I, I posted the picture, and I, I'm having a hard time identifying it. Someone thought that it might be an endangered one, and I got all scared. So the poor guy's in a container with, with some worms. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm wondering what's if anyone knows. One? What's the thing in the lower left? Uh, that's so. That's one of my uh, red wiggler worms. Oh, Ugh. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have Kevin come up and look at it because he knows a lot about salamanders. He's but he he's moving slow. Here he is. Hold on. All right. It's a lead back. Could be a young red back. Lead back or red back? Yeah, lead. Kevin thinks it might be a lead back. You might want to compare it with that. Okay. All right. Now, now I've got a fourth one. And are those rare? Like, if I was to bring it to a woods, I found this in Jackson. Um, can I can I bring it to any woods near me and put it back? Well, that's probably better than nothing. <laughs> Yeah, right now he's in a container with the worms, but I want to drop him off somewhere tomorrow morning. Um, but I was scared if it was endangered, I, I don't I don't know what to do. I Kevin says it's not I rare, one this week too, but you probably you know, should put it in a similar habitat. He's looking okay. it up in his amphibian book right now, though. Okay. I, 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 I can put it in the chat. In a he's so cute. Now, and I put it in a, in a, I naturally, it was a red bag. Salamander, the one I found in a brass one. I, okay. I can't. I, I naturally. If you're interested, I can find it. Okay. Do you have a piece of paper? Okay, <laughs> just one thing. Yeah. Hey, Stephanie, is it like mottle? It has like, like, like. Spots different coloration on the skin. It does. Color. Um, oh, nice. Look at the, the front legs, like brown and another lighter color there. Yeah, and there's actually a bit of blue in it, too. <gasps> wow. That's, that's what Kevin thought. It was a little bit blue. Yeah, there's the. Yeah. You know, I can put it in the chat, Stephanie, about whether you can just release it near you or you get to drive back to Jackson. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather not do that, but if, if that's what I got to do, I will. <laughs> there he is. Again. You know, it's hard getting a, a good shot of him. Yeah. Did he come to you in inside a mushroom? Yeah, it was inside a Grifola. Oh, jeez. I was tearing it apart, and, you know, a couple bugs fell out, and then this guy was staring at me. <laughs> mm. Wanted to wish Paul a happy birthday. Right. <laughs> okay, I found a picture of mine that I found this week in a graph Would you like to see it? All it's right. the red back. Let me, uh, I'll stop sharing. Okay. Okay. It's on iNaturalist, okay.
Can you see my screen? No. Okay, what should I do here? Show screen? Correct. Can you see it, no? No, nothing's coming up. Your, your, your screen sharing's starting to work, but there you go. But it was, it's not the first time actually I found it in a grief folder. <laughs> One time I felt very, I felt terrible because I fall. I found it in a grief folder after I follow the grief folder. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, here's another picture. Another picture. Yeah, that's what I think it is—a red back. If that one's way more red than mine is. Well, you know, when they're immature, they 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 look a little different. Okay. All right. You know what, there's a, a couple things. There's what they just said, but then there's a lead back. And then there's also a dusky salmonid. You might just go online and research them because sometimes the pictures don't really look as true as they do in real life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, now I have a list of six different ones that it could be. Ooh, have fun. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm much better at mushrooms. <laughs> uh, all right, I think he's just going to go to the woods near me tomorrow. See, it's wet, and there's there's a good spot for him, I think. <laughs> yeah, as long as long as it's wet, if there's some little bit of water nearby. Yeah, yeah, there's a little creek in there, so we should be should be okay. Did you get a lot of rain? We just got a pretty good rainstorm. We did last night. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> found it, now. I found this salamander in a grief hola that that was. 12 pound heavy. 12 pounds. Wow. Okay, so are you, right, are you thanks, done? Guys. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you done there, Hervé? Okay, yes, so, I'm done. Okay, cool. I have um, two mushrooms I wanted to show. And then I see uh, Maricel had something to show in. Uh, so, I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name, Svetlana. She has stuff she would like to show. Um, so for my... I have two mushrooms just from this past weekend. One I have identified. This one, this was a really nice uh, troop of Gallerina marginata. We just found that in the Forest Resource Center too. Okay, yeah, that was, this I just found this weekend in Bucks County. Um, so they're really quite abundant. There were, the, the log had a dozen or so on there growing like this, but um, they were really nice, really beautiful. So uh, there's actually a little asco up here growing too, and I forgot about that. But funeral you, bells, right, Luke? I'm sorry? Funeral bells. Funeral bells, yes. So or the, I always call them deadly gallerinas. So gallerina marginata. So they always grow on wood singly like this, right? Like in single troop, not in clusters. That's my understanding. What's the name, Luke? Gallerina what? Marginata. Oh, okay. They have this little, very delicate ring on them. And these things were... No more than an inch across. Is one L or two L's? One. Just one, Marcel. Okay, I got it. Yes, there you go. I wrote Just... the name of Jurasco. Oh, okay, thank you. That's Cocorine. So anyway, these are fun to find. They're, they're, always, they're always interesting to see. Um, they are toxic. They, um, I can say, have the amatoxins in them. And sometimes people get them mixed up with honey mushrooms or other things. Or flamulina. Flamulina. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep. There's a better picture of the asco in there. 
This is the one back in the spring. I brought some home to look at him under a microscope. My cat ate one. And I had to get him his stomach pumped. It, it cost me twelve hundred dollars to have a stomach pumped. Oh my gosh! So be careful. I just I literally had it on my kitchen table and I turned my back for a split second and he jumped up there and stole it and ran away with it. <laughs> Sounds familiar. <laughs> okay, this one, I you know, and again, I didn't bring it home with me. I, I wasn't in a position to be collecting. Um, and I guess I thought it was an anosity. It was in a deciduous forest, kind of growing in the leaf litter. Oh, no, it was in the ground. You can see here, it was in the ground. So very small, two inches high, attached, no, whoops, sorry. There's no, um, I couldn't find any kind of ring on there. It actually looks like the, uh, I guess those gills might be a little bit serrated on there. You don't think it's a hebeloma? Could have been a hebelona. Yeah, I actually thought that too. And it did have an odor, although I couldn't place that odor. It was, but it did, did have a distinct odor to it. Let me show you the, the cap because that might be a better, a better name altogether. That's the cap. Don't you think a hebeloma? be worth looking at. Okay. Well, fortunately, I left it in the woods, but it did have a distinct odor to it when I smelled it. What do you think, Nina and John? It, it didn't really look much like a have a long, not, the top, not the cat. I okay. don't know. Maybe, maybe I, I it, know. has it been beaten in the rain? Maybe it has. Maybe. I found it on Saturday. It rained pretty hard all day Friday. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, found, I found a little hebeloma the other day in the woods, uh, and it smelled like shoe, uh, you know, you put on shoe polish, real, real, real strong. Hmm. Okay. All right, well, maybe hebeloma. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for letting me share them. That's, that was the extent of my mushrooming this weekend. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. Was it was it raspy under the cap? Raspy under the cap. Rough under the stipe. It, it, on a stipe, right under the cap. Uh, a lot of the times, the hebeloma are kind of raspy, uh, kind of um, rough. Mm. I saw texture. Yeah, I saw. But some I can identify hebelomas, but I saw the texture. Yep. Yeah, so that might, yeah, it probably isn't. Right On the right side, yep. Right. Lower, lower right side. Somewhere there, you passed it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. Right up, right up again. Yep. Oh, yeah. It's top. almost, but it's, right. no, that looks like uh, two teeth running down from the gills. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, and see the gill edges? The gill edges actually are kind of roughened. Hmm. Oh, wow. Uh, that's not what you're looking for. No, no that's, that's not what I thought. That's not yeah. Pebble no. I don't know what it is. <laughs> okay. I'll put it on the fungus identification page on Facebook, and one of the 10,000 people there might have a name. <laughs> okay. Now, that was me. Um, let's... um. Let's uh, um, Lana. Can you correct me in how you say your name? You're um still muted though. I think I unmuted myself. It's yes. Sweet Lana, but if you say Sweet Lana, I don't mind. Sweet Lana. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a Russian name. It's Sweet Lana, even though it's Ukrainian way of Russian name. Uh, I was in the woods today and I found this baby and I have no clue what that is. It's so fascinating to me. It's bluing and um, you will not be able to see it. 
I don't want to hold it to the camera, but I will do some trick which I do in my classroom. Here is the mushroom. I will hold the mirror to the camera and try to, okay, let's move. Oh, now, this thing disappeared. Just one second, please be with me. Okay, I need to see, to see my keyboard. Okay, now here comes the mushroom. I don't know if it's visible. It's kind of interesting because the gills are bluish green. And when I cut it, it's also blue, blue gills and it's staining blue. So can you see it or it's uh, too tiny? Too tiny. Okay. I think it's a lot curious though, right? I guess it looks like. Yeah. Oh, Lactarius. Yeah, yeah. Lactarius, we found the greenish standing one kilo something. Yeah, no. it's, it's this, there's a cap and it's, it's, it's bluish greenish. Caledonium. Caledonia. Caledonia. Oh. Yeah, that's right. What kind of trees were around it? Was it near a palm tree? Um, it was under pine trees. Yeah. Yeah. I was collecting my um, soilus and I found those. Maybe it was next to pine trees, maybe some other trees were there, but it just, um, it's so interesting that when you cut it, it just, look, it, it's green. It, it's, I don't know, green, blue. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think Liz, I mean, Marisol put the name in there, Lactarius chelidonium. Yeah. So, chelidonium, it's like CH, chelidonium. Correct. It may okay. have a white there, but oh. I don't know. There, there's no latex. It, there's no sign of latex. Looks like it's pretty beaten up. And it, there was no, chelidonium would stain, wouldn't it? Well, it does stain. I think you meant the latex would stain. Well, latex would stain the gills. Uh, it does. When you touch it, it, it kind of does, if you can see that. Yeah. Uh, maybe I should take pictures and then post them, because it's the hard to see. Lighting is very bad. I was, I was just going to suggest to, 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 take a, to take a fairly sharp edge and just mm -hmm. Put a one inch slit from the mm -hmm. top to see if there's any if it's if it's a, a lactarius and it's not too old and dried out it would it would have a little bit of latex no it doesn't look like it does have anything just stain did, did you cut the gills yes okay yes Well, I probably will take pictures. I, I think I saw one in my backyard under a pine. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know it was a lactarius and I was trying to slice it with my fingernail. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it really was just a little bit watery, but, but the, the cap color on this thing is quite, um, Strange. It, it, it's uh, tan and, and green and bluish and dull. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I think that's what it is. And mine didn't really um, give forth, if, if it was any latex, it was just uh, watery. And clear. Yeah. Clear, maybe a little orange. Maybe. And, and then the stain comes later. Mm -hmm. It's kind of strange. My experience with that mushroom is that it varies a lot. And those to me look like they're a little waterlogged and also old. Like, no, they're not that old. They're just strange. And uh, well, I just nearly stepped on them and I thought I never saw them before. I don't know what it is. 
And also, I wanted to ask you if you know what that could be. In the woods, they look like red. Right now, for some reason, um, it looks to me like brown. But when I was taking pictures in the woods, they were red. And the spore, the gills were pink. It's, it's just... Lacaria. Lacaria. Okay. Probably Lacata. Probably. Okay. That's how they look. Like little tiny drops of red paint. Brick red. So Svetlana, you're going to have to go back and, and look for some... Take pictures. Yeah. Take pictures in spore print. And for the next meeting, I will do it. It just, I found them today. And sorry. <laughs> That's... And one, one more. <laughs> That's what I brought home. Hey, for your swillist, do you take the pores off too, or do you just peel the cuticle? No, I just peel them. Okay, and you don't get a digestive upset from the pores? I eat them all my life. And well, we did not have this kind of swillist in Ukraine. Um, it was a slippery jack, but um, so far. <laughs> Thank I've been you. Doing for a long time. They're a bit slippery when they're cooked, but. Um, I'm going to marinate some for Thanksgiving. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, Marisol, I think you said you wanted to circle back around. Mm -hmm. I forgot about this one. All right. Uh, Sue found it in Jackson. And I found it there before, but I could never identify it like four years ago. And it was when I saw it, when she gave it to me, it looked really, really strange because it looks like a sterium, the false turkey tail. But if you touch it, it was very bendable. I don't know what's the right word, pliable, like flexible. And if you look closer, you can even see here, it has these craters. It's pitted here. And also, I was suspecting that it could not be a stereo because of the purplish tone. So I have the feeling that it could be Chandra Stereum Purpurum, but I wasn't sure. So I did the micro and it has this beautiful inflated hifa, like a lollipop thing. I cannot make it bigger. Oh, a little bit. Oh, only like that. So it's in the flesh. There were several of these things right there in the flesh. And mm, the next picture. And sometimes they were the format. Secondary um, globose shape was showing in the side. And so, to my, because my microscope is so dirty that I can't ha have great photos, I draw them. So here you see the regular shape of that special globose, HIFA, whatever name that is. I don't know that name. And the ones that were growing in the secondary one, it, were, it was really funny. Mm. And then it has these beautiful cl uh, clamps with a little hole in the center. And I took note of the spores, and it has also this uh, excertes cystidia. And then I check with the chondrosterium purpureum, it was it matched. Hmm. So it was pretty exciting. And Sue found it in the, we were talking about where, and it's in the same area where I found mine. There is a creek that um, you, from the house, uh, you cross the bridge. And then you turn to the right, and you, there is a path that goes along the creek. I found it there. She found it there, too. Mm -hmm. So uh, one more thing is very unusual in the way it is growing because um, it's like the, um, like almost like a single fruiting body. And sometimes you find it like many fruiting bodies together, uh, like occupying a bigger area. So that was an exciting Found, find, and that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you.
All right. Does anybody else have anything they want to uh, jump in there and show yeah, us? Yeah, I, I have something. All right. Go right ahead. Okay. Sorry. Internet is slow. Okay, let's go to uh, share screen. I think it's a show horn poster, but I would like confirmation. And, uh, can you see? Mm -hmm. Yes. And let's go to the next one. I cannot see the next one. Okay. Next picture of the same of the same specimen. It was about one foot in diameter. It was it's very large. When I saw it from a distance, it looked like a dirty plastic bag. That was all in a bowl, okay? Can, can you please speak a little louder? Hey, I found it in Rogers Gardens actually. When I saw it, it looked like a, like a plastic bag, you know, like a dirty plastic bag, but it's pretty large. It's about one foot in diameter. You see the little piece on the left is about the size of my hand. This one here, you see, it's pretty large. I don't know. Does anybody have any uh, thoughts on that one? So is it a shoehorn or oyster? What's that growing out of? Is that mulch? That's growing on the litter. Yes, it's mulch. It's a, I think it's a rhododendron garden, so there's mulch. Maybe. Uh, could be a bit acidic. Can you close the picture for a second? I want to see what the name is that they're saying. The name, okay. Uh, there you go. Hohen Buhelia petaloides. Does that seem right to anybody? I can't say I really know that species or. Has anybody else commented on that, Perry? On iNaturalist? Are you still there, Hervé? I think you may have frozen up on us.